Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to store a new SharePoint item ID in a variable in your Power App. If you enjoy Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, Teams, and SharePoint videos, feel free to subscribe because we put out more videos in those areas. And now for my intro. So in this video, we're going to store a, an ID in a newly created SharePoint item. So what I mean by that is when I create a new SharePoint item in my contractor list, I want the ID so I can patch it in another list because these SharePoint lists are all related. So my contractor list, it's just a list of contractors. Contractor salary list correlates the contract to a salary. Each contractor is assigned to a job site and I will store all this data in my master contractor site list. So it has a contractor and the job site. I'm doing this because a contractor could be assigned to multiple job sites at one time. So I wanna keep these all separated so it's easier to organize it. And the reason I need to store an ID automatically into a variable when I create a new item is because I'm going to patch another list with that ID and I need to store that ID in a variable so I can use it in the other patch statement. So to start in my Power App, make sure all of your data sources are connected. So I have all my lists connected here. And on my screen, I have options to add a new contractor. So adding a new contractor will patch in my contractor list. But if I already know which job site this contractor is going to go to, I can use another patch statement to patch my master contractor site list. because so I know who the contractor is, and I know who the job site is. But in order for me to do that, I need the ID of the newly created item. So if I want to add a new contractor, I just have two basic inputs right here where the user can enter in text. So I want to enter in a user named Jerry Gold. He's my new contractor. And I already know which job site to assign him to. I want to add Jerry Gold to my contractor list and then use that ID to create the master contractor site here. So let's go ahead and work on this patch function. So to store the ID of a newly created SharePoint item, you wanna go ahead and set that. So we will set a variable here. We'll just do var new contractor ID. And we're going to include the patch function within that set function. So patch contractor list, and this is going to be a new item. So we're going to use the defaults formula contractor list. And then I'm just going to store the first and last name. So that will be this input and that input. And don't forget to close up your defaults with parentheses. My first name column is called first name. And we're just going to look at what my input is called. And on the left hand side is input first name, so input first name dot text. And then we're going to do the last name. And this is going to be the input for last name. So input last name. I recommend labeling your uh, components here so it's easier to reference in your Power App. Okay. Let's go ahead and close up that patch function. When you use the patch function, it'll actually store that data for you to use. I can use any of the columns that I just created. So I wanna store the ID in my set formula. So we'll do dot ID. So this should be all set. So when I create a new person, it will store that ID in my var new contractor ID variable. So now if a job site is included on this, we also want to do a second patch here. So this formula is going to be, if this is not blank, that's going to be combo job site dot selected. So if that's not blank, then the user did include a job site on their entry. So we want to go ahead and do patch. This will be my master contractor site list. And it's going to be a new record. So it's going to be defaults master contractor site. And now we have two lookup columns here. One's for contractor. That's going to look at my contractor list to pull the contractor. And my other lookup is the job site. And that's going to look in my job site SharePoint list. And based on this ID, it will link the correct site. It's a nice clean way to organize your data because you can have multiple contractors at multiple different sites. So you want to have that in a separate SharePoint list. 
some relational database um recommend that if you don't know anything about relational databases because you can do a lot in sharepoint list by connecting everything with ids okay so if the job site isn't blank we want to go ahead and create a record in my master contractor site list and it's going to be a new record my first column i'm going to enter in data is the contractor column and this is a lookup column so we're going to do id and value if you don't know how to patch a lookup column i just created a video a couple days ago so check that out and so we're already storing this id and value in the var new contractor id variable if i created margaret it will store the id 8 there and then that's going to be the value in the contractor column so we can go ahead and just paste in that variable there okay that should be all set and now we just need to do the job site the job site this is also another lookup column so I'm going to do an id and then also a value so for this one, we're going to have to do a lookup. Let me go ahead and remove that comma right there because it isn't needed and it was throwing an error. So to grab this job site ID, we're going to need to do a lookup on the job sites list. And we're going to do uh, the site. So this is my title column, title equal to CMB job site dot selected dot value. And then we're going to return the ID from that. And this is going to be the same formula for our ID and value. And let's go ahead and close this up. We're closing up the patch and then we're going to close up the if statement. And when this is all said and done, we're going to want to reset the inputs right here. So Jerry, Gold, and Department Store. So let's just go ahead and add those reset formulas. So reset, input first name, set, and put last name then reset combo box site and you should also reset the variable so we can set our new contractor id to blank i'm going to comment this out because i actually want to see the contractor id when i run this so here is the formula right here and just to go over it we're going to patch a new record in my contractor list this is just the first name and last name, and then we're storing the created ID into a variable called new contractor ID, because we're using that in our second function if there is a job site selected. If there's a job site selected, we're going to update my master contractor site list with a new record. We're storing the ID in a column called contractor. That's a lookup looking at my contractor list then it will pull the first and last name there and then we're also adding data to a job site column we're getting that data from our job site sharepoint list and we're just returning in the ids where the title is equal to what's in our combo box and after we're resetting all the variables so if i want to go ahead and add jerry gold we can click on submit those boxes went blank let's go look at our list so jerry was patched in our contractor list with an id of 11 Let's go ahead and check out what the variable is actually storing in it. And it is storing the number of 11. So that's how you would store the ID of a newly created SharePoint item. So let's go ahead and look at my master contractor site list. And we see we have the ID of 11. The ID of 11 is linking to Jerry Gold. And then we have job site number three, which is linking to a department store, which we had in our combo box. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll leave the formulas up on the screen right here, and I'll put them in the description for everybody. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below, and I will catch you in the next video.